Hey, I'm Mark Romanek, and welcome to another episode of Fishing 411. On this week's episode, we're up in Kenai, Alaska, fishing the Upper Kenai River. Today's target, we're going to go after some trout, some valley varden, and maybe some red. Stick around. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Northwest Ontario Tourism Association, there's no place like this. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Evan Rood Outboards, introducing the all new Evan Rood E Tech G2, the outboard of the future, available today. Maxima Fishing Lines, the right line every time. Also, these fine sponsors. got out here and flipped it in and touched bottom. I'm still learning this, this style of fishing, so the guy's just like, hey, you got one on. I didn't take very long at all. Man, I love Alaska. Look at that. Nice getting fat little dolly. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Overwhelmingly, what we're finding amongst the drift boat captains up here on the Kenai River is they love bead fishing. And bead fishing, you can do it a variety of ways. You can do it with spinning tackle like we're doing today, or you can do it with a fly tackle. And what it is, is the bead is essentially replicating a live egg, drifting downstream, the salmon spawn, the trout come up and eat those eggs. It's just that simple. That bead is food, and these fish literally gobble these things down. It's amazing how well that simple bead works at catching trout. That's Definitely huge. a bigger dolly than I've caught before. Caught a couple on this trip, but nothing quite like this one. This is a nice looking fish right here. Fun stuff. Bucket list stuff. So well, now you just need to get a bucket fish. You get a big rainbow, I'll fill that bottom bucket full of water. Bucket. Yeah, I might have been ready. I could have got it, but I wasn't quite ready. He's not ready either. Wow, that is sweet. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. There's some very stark differences in the Kenai from the lower end of the river to the upper end of the river. The lower end of the river, wider and slower. The upper end of the river, much narrower, much faster. Um, and to me, you don't even really feel like you're on the same river. When you're up here in the upper Kenai, it feels like a completely different environment than when you're on the lower river. Um, the lower river, you're also getting into urban fisheries. The upper river, this is more wilderness style of fishing up here. So there's something for everyone on the Kenai River. Well, it looks like we kind of set up on this flat here. Uh, it's real rocky here, and I guess these trout spa are spawning on this flat. Um, we just kind of set up and anchored the boat up, and now we're just kind of wading around and drifting through, these, through this flat. Just, uh, basically putting the beads right where the fish are. Well, we're bead fishing, and what this bead is is basically replicating an egg that's just drifting aimlessly downstream. 
And these Dolly Varden, that's what they feed on. The rainbows, that's what they feed on as well. So what we're trying to do is get as natural drift as possible, bringing that bead right downstream. And hopefully, them rainbows and Dolly Varden will view it as lunch and jump on it. Anybody who's ever fished steelhead with a spawn bag and a split shot and just kind of throw it out there and roll along the bottom will appreciate what we're doing. It's virtually the same presentation, except for at the terminal end, instead of a spawn bag, we've got just a, a single bead that replicates a single egg. It's amazing just changing the bead. All we did was just change the color on the bead, first drift through, I got a bite. That was amazing. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Oh, no, it looks like a dolly. Maybe it's a rainbow. Yeah, it's biting like a dolly. That was so cool. That's a little boat. Oh, yeah. See there? See how skinny they are? There's just not a lot of eggs going down the river yet. Well, they haven't had a chance to fatten up yet. Huh? This is a leopard bow. Look at the spots clean on, down around on his belly. Just gorgeous fish. 18, 19 inches long. Just like that would be beautiful. Look at that. Here we go. Oh, there's a big bow. Okay, low pressure, low pressure. You might even try low left pressure. Low left pressure? Yeah, see what happens. See, let's see if I can get back out in the river here a little bit more. Yeah, don't go over your boots. Don't go over your boots. You're going over your boots. <laughs> he might be worth going over my boots for. <laughs> I'm gonna get him out of that mate, that raging current back there. Wow. My word. <laughs> a little fatter than the other one. A little fatter. That one's found a few more eggs. He goes. You know what amazes me is I set up in here, Dennis got set up and I threw maybe 10, maybe 12, maybe 15 passes through here with never a take. And then all we did was change the bead color. First drift through, boom, fish. Second drift through, boom, fish. So the question is, does color matter in trout fishing? Oh, apparently it matters big time. And if you're not willing to accept that and make those changes, you could be struggling on certain days. So what's the moral of the story? Lots of beads, lots of colors. Play around with those colors until you find out what's working. Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV, Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. Additional considerations provided by Ontario's Algoma Country, That Real. And we got a nice one on here. We'll try to get him up on the bank if we can. The key in this really fast current is to keep your rod tip low. It's cool to see them jump out of the water, but when they jump out of the water, they like to get off. We try to keep them in the water as much as we can here. See if we can get him slid up on the bank. Girl back in the water. Man, that was fun. <laughs> this is really a new style of fishing for me. There's a lot to this. You know, every time it seems like I'm actually getting a good drift or getting a bite, but this shows how many fish are actually in this river. Well, basically, we're doing a variety of different stuff here. We're doing some fishing out of the drift boat, which is really cool, and then occasionally we'll pull the drift boat in, jump on shore, and there's places that you can fish from shore. Where I'm standing right here, I can see these sockeye salmon spawning right out in front of me and uh, the Dolly Varden and the rainbows here. Ooh, it's exciting. Every time you go around the bend, it's like a whole new day, starting all over again. I love it, just love it.
There is a fish. Ooh, baby. Ooh. These are so much fun, especially on these nice steelhead rods, these light action steelhead rods. What a riot. Oh, I have not got any eyes on this one yet. There he is. Nice dog. All right. <laughs> it happened almost like we planned it that way. I'd like to say it planned it that way. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, we'll catch you another time. If you're gonna come up here and you're gonna roll beads, you're gonna to wanna to have some high quality tackle. Certainly you're gonna have some graphite rods. What I'm running here is an Okuma T40X. They designed them specially for steelhead fishing. I've got a medium light nine and a half footer here is what I basically got in my hand. I got an RTX reel um, and I've got eight pound, uh, excuse me, eight pound test Maxima monofilament on here. This is a pretty good setup for what we're doing. You're gonna catch small fish all the way up to five pounds or larger. So you're gonna need a rod capable of handling the bigger fish in the strong current. And I think this rod is a, is a pretty good compromise for what we're doing right now. Additional considerations provided by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Fishing 411 is also brought to you by Okuma, high performance, and Mustang Survival. We save lives for a living. We're open water trolling today, and when we're open water trolling, we use our Lowrance, our sonar, as our eyes. Picture a bass fisherman in the springtime, when they can see the fish, they're using their eyes to see the fish, and they're casting to that fish. Out here in open water, we're using our sonar. If we're not marking fish, we're not fishing here. So we're gonna move on until we find the fish that we want, and those are the fish that we're gonna set up on. The scenery here in the Upper Kenai is absolutely breathtaking. It's stellar. You look around and you get this beautiful water. You got these cascading hillsides that go right up to mountains. Um, today we happen to have a partly cloudy day, so we've got some of the hill hilltops are being covered by uh, by clouds and stuff. But it's still just absolutely gorgeous. Just the view is worth the price of admission here. One of the things that we're learning about the Kenai River is it's a multifaceted river. In the lower part of the river, you know, it's not it's sluggish, not quite as much current different styles of fishing down there. Uh, folks are doing things like plug pulling and that type of stuff. The further you go upstream, the more it gets narrow and faster. And this water up here is primarily trout water. Um, and we're seeing techniques like bead fishing. And, uh, and that's exactly what we've been doing here on this, on this show is bead fishing for beautiful rainbows and beautiful dolly barton. All right, I haven't caught very many dollies today. It's been mostly rainbows. Getting a good rod bend on this puppy. They are strong. I can bring her over here for you. Oh, there we go. There we go. Miss Dolly. Pretty fish. My guide on this adventure is Dennis Randa, and I would highly recommend that you're using a guide on all of these trips. We've done several since we've been in Alaska, and frankly, I don't know how a guy could come up here cold turkey and expect to catch fish. You really need the expertise of the local guides. Um, and in this case, you absolutely have to work with a guide because this water is set up so that commercial charters are only allowed for certain guides to, to fish up here. Um, and that's exactly what's going on for us today. So um, the way to check all that out is to go through an outfitter like what we did. Salmon Catcher Lodge will hook you up on the right guides so that you're in the right stretches of the river doing the right things at the right time of year. That is a beauty. Wow, that's a nice fish. Woo. You want to get the bucket ready? Uh, I will indeed. A little bit. No, 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 no. He's not quite ready on that, is he? No, no, no. Oh, just turn that head, come back towards us. Come on, Papa. Come on. Come on, baby. Get in the box. Oh, baby, come on. Now we got her. There you go. <laughs> okay. Man, this has just been so much fun today. That is a beautiful fish. We're gonna get a quick picture and, and get her back in the water where she belongs. Wow. 
I commonly call this lunch hole. It's a good spot about middle in the, in, of the drift, about halfway down the river part of the drift. And uh, it's a great place to pull over. And, and it's not uncommon to see lots of bear sign in here. This, this hole not only is a great place to catch a trout and char, but it's, uh, it's a place where the carcasses wash around. And there's a salmon head laying over here right now that the bears have, have uh, gotten all that they want off of it. So uh, we'll have a bite to eat, and then we'll finish up our afternoon drifting down through the lower part of the canyon. Delicious. That's a fish right there. Let the rod do some work here. One of the nice things about these steelhead rods is they will whip these, these dollies and rainbows pretty fast if you let the rod do the work. And uh, whoa, what another good fish this is. All of a sudden, he decided to come alive. Oh, there you go, I think it's red. Oh my goodness. Here, I thought I had me another decent rainbow. Oh, let's see if I can put a little bit of pressure. It's a, it's a rainbow. I saw it right here. You saw it? It's a rainbow? I could have swore I saw it right here. Well, he decided to go pretty darn crazy. Wow. That's all I can say. It's not very often that I'm speechless, but I'm, I'm kind of speechless right now. Another nice rainbow. Not as big as that real big one, but definitely a high-quality fish. Oh, baby. Let me get her head up here for you, Dennis. There we go. Sweet. There she goes. Swim puppy. Good job. Additional considerations provided by Stryker Brands. Give Mother Nature the cold shoulder. And Bait Rigs Tackle, America's innovator of fine fishing products. Fishing 411 is also brought to you by Fishhawk Electronics. Featuring Fishhawk's Catch Fish Guarantee. Woo, that's a big one. Oh, mama. This is a big one. This is the biggest one I've had on so far. I just hooked that fish, and one of the more, most important things here is to keep that rod tip low to the water. These trout are going to want to be jumping all the time. So if you can keep that rod tip low, it kind of keeps them in the water longer. Got a better chance of landing these fish. Put your rod tip up, it forces that fish out of the water and uh, off, the, off the hook. So this is, seems like a pretty nice fish here. What we're doing is we're actually pulling these fish up the current after we hook them. So they're really pulling super hard and they're using that current to their advantage. Holy cow. That might be the prettiest fish I've ever caught. Oh my goodness. All of the fish that, that enter the Kenai down below ultimately wind up up here. There's, there's all, all the, the, the four major species of salmon um, that, that can be found in the river. We have kings, coho, reds. Uh, there's pink salmon up here, not very many make it all the way up here, but there are a few. We've got a, a great dolly fishery up here. It's managed uh, conservative for big rainbows and dollies. Um, to catch and release, you can keep a small fish to eat, uh, one per day under 16. And uh, it, it's, it's just maintained a, a healthy quality of, of, of experience. And, and like some of the rainbows we've seen and, and some of the dollies we've seen today, there's, there's a lot of good, nice, healthy fish swimming around up here. There's a good look at him right there. Now is that a rainbow trout or what? Is that a stellar fish? Oh. <laughs> okay, here he comes, here he comes. Come on, sweetheart, a little closer. There we go, look at that. Now that is a Kenai River rainbow. Look at that beautiful fish. Whoa, baby, whoa, baby. Absolutely sweet. All right, it's time to get this fish back in the water. Thank you, sweet pea. We have had an incredible day here on the river today. I don't know how anybody could ask for more than this. Absolutely incredible. Fish pound in action. This one 
Just absolutely pumping. Oh, I'm telling you what. Let's see if we can't let's see if we can't get this one to cooperate. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, come to Papa. Not quite right. You give another little rod pump here. Thank you, Jesus. Now you're getting up to where I want pictures. Thank you, Jesus. Now you're getting up to where I want pictures. Well, that, my friends, is a Dolly Varden. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> you know, they're members of the Char family, so they look a little bit like a brook trout. And now uh, they're related, of course, to the other chars, like lake trout. Look at that hook jaw on that. That thing is gorgeous. Caught lots of fish in my life. They don't all make my heart pump, but this one made it pump big time. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up here. Beautiful rain. Oh. Oh, Ooh, baby. You didn't like that. <laughs> the rubber catapult net. There we go. Look at that. There nice fish, Jake. <laughs> well, I'm Jake Romanak. And I'm Mark Romanak. And you've been watching Fishing 4 in 1. I hope you had a good time this week up here in the Kenai River fishing for beautiful fish like this rainbow. Get a chance, check out Salmon Catcher Live. You'll be glad you did. Closed captioning is provided by Orca Coolers, built for everyday use and total abuse. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Northwest Ontario Tourism Association, there's no place like this. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Evan Rood Outboards, introducing the all new Evan Rood e -Tech G2, the outboard of the future, available today. Maxima Fishing Lines, the right line every time. The key to being safe in the Alaska bush, always wear a life jacket. <laughs>